Good morning. How are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to review a hand sent in by Breadfish, which by the way, excellent, excellent name. And this is a hand from Live 1 2, and we have Ace King. So let's check it out and see what we're doing here. All right, so in this spot, Hero opens to 15 under the gun with Ace-King offsuit, and if you're playing online, you're probably like, what in the heck, that is a huge open raise size, and you're 100% correct. But in live games, especially at 1-2, it's not uncommon to see open raise sizes that are table standard, somewhere between 5 to 7x. That's very, very common. So if 15 was kind of the table standard here, I'm not super shocked to see it, and it's not like super, super out of the ordinary. So the fishy lag calls, the agromaniac calls, we go three-way to it, and in Breadfish's write-up, Breadfish says that the fishy lag was playing about half of the hands he was dealt, and the agromaniac pretty much every single hand. The agromaniac was definitely putting in a lot of money, both of things like busted draws, but also things like top pair good kicker. So running pretty well, and obviously with that stack size of 1-2, that shouldn't be super, super shocking. So flop comes like this, and at this point we should be very, very happy and comfortable. We're sitting here with about 5 SPR, and just as a pure default against players that are kind of defined this way, fishy lag gives a lot of action with second best hands, plays way too many of them pre-flop, and an agromaniac who is someone that likes to put a lot of money with a lot of different hand strengths, this is one where I'm kind of already in my head like, okay, if a big pocket's created here, I'm not going to feel uncomfortable with it. So here decides to lead for pot, okay, gets called, and faces a raise. So at this point, what are we doing? Now in the actual hand, Breadfish decided to pile it in here, and Breadfish says this in the write-up. I thought I was ahead on the pot bet, but I knew I was behind when re-raised even though I still shoved. I think the decision to shove is incorrect, and is there any other advice you can provide in these loose, low-limit games? So looking at this, I don't think there's any reason to feel like this was incorrect. Okay, so think about it this way. What kind of hands is the fishy lag going to show up with here when they call your 50 and then if they do decide to call your punch? And I think that they'll call your 50 pretty wide and I think that there's not a ton of combos that beat you and I think I'm feeling very, very confident if I shove here like you did and the fishy lag decides to call, right? There's still plenty of second best hands that I think do this with. Even if you just throw in combos of like king queen, king jack, there are tons of combos of like king eight and king six and if they're playing eight six, is it suited only or is it all of them? So there's just not like a ton of combos that I'm worried about. And there's still plenty of flush draws, plenty of second best king X, plenty of whatever the heck that they don't want to fold. So against the fishy lag, feeling very comfortable. And honestly, same concept against the agromaniac. There are going to be some hands in their ranges that beat us but nowhere near enough of them for me to worry about it. And I think all of those hands, or at least most of them, will feel comfortable putting a lot of money in right this moment and calling our shove. So the biggest advice I can give you is one, have a plan for this before you even bet the flop. Number two, top air top kicker is a pretty damn awesome hand and it's pretty difficult for most people to be able to beat you, especially on the flop. So don't over panic and overthink things, especially against people that you deem as very, very maniac or fishy or any of those kind of things. And then third is don't be results oriented. Okay, so in this exact situation, we do end up losing the pots, and it's a situation where we actually lose against both people, and it just simply is what it is. So it sucks when you put a lot of money in against someone that you deem is really fishy, really maniac, and then all of a sudden they show up at the absolute tippy top of their range. It is pretty damn disheartening. But in no way, shape, or form does that mean that you made a mistake. They're going to have some hands that beat you in their range, right? The Agromaniac is sometimes going to have pocket sixes, or king six suited, or eight six offsuit. But they're also going to have things like nine seven, five seven, flush draws, king jack, which actually ended up beating us on the river, but it is what it is. All you can do is try to put your money in good. And of course, flush draws and all those kind of things too. So don't be results oriented in these games. If someone who's playing really, really wide somehow shows up at the absolute top of their range, chalk it up as a bad beat, don't stress about it, move on and make sure you don't make suboptimal decisions against them in the future. I think thinking that you should have gotten out of this hand on the flop is a suboptimal decision. I love the way you play this hand. Everything about this looked totally, totally good. Don't second guess it just because you lost it. Second guess it after you analyze it again and say, well, if all the ranges make sense and all the math made sense here, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I'm just going to continue making good decisions going forward and keep doing what I need to do. 
So Breadfish, hopefully this answers your question. Thank you so much for sending it in. Hopefully you enjoyed. And if you're looking for your next step today, I'm going to suggest my live workbook. It's going to run you through situations and spots at 1-2, at 2-5, and it's going to force you to look at spots from a very technical, very hand ready point of view. And the reason why you want to do that is because when you've explored hands from a very technical point of view, when you're getting much better at your hand reading, that's when you're going to be able to look at this spot very objectively and say, wait, this is not so good, or as in this situation, hey, this is very, very good, and if they happen to wake up at the top of their range, eh, sucks to be me, not going to stress about it too, too much. But you can only get that confidence and get that ability by doing that kind of exploration and study off table. So if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a link in the description box. You'll also see a link on the screen right now. Definitely check it out if you're interested in kind of working through situations like this, not just single raised pots, but also three bet pots, multi-way pots, and heads up pots, all the pots you need to be exploring off table to start developing the confidence and objective knowledge to know whether your plays are good or bad. So same as always, if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know whether it's about this video, workbook, anything like that. Otherwise, as always, I'll see you back soon with a brand new video. In the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.